Oh. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Trophy Wars. This is episode 393. Yeah. I don't have the agenda up right yes, now. Yes, 93. You don't have the agenda up. We've been here like a cop picking hour, and you don't have the agenda up. Well, no, no. The agenda's up, but I had windows on top of it. <laughs> uh, I'm your host, Shiki Mick. Alongside with me, the man, the myth, the legend, he's Alex. And you give me shit for not having the agenda in front of me. You don't even have the agenda up now. Uh, no, but I did. I had the agenda up, but then we were having, like, I was getting all staticky, and my connection was slowing down, so I had to cut my Wi-Fi off on my laptop, so I don't have it in front of me anymore. Wait, wait, if your Wi-Fi is off your <coughs> laptop, how are you talking to us? Because I'm on a desktop right now. There were too many machines pulling through the bandwidth. <coughs> that damn Kentucky internet... He brings the awesome every week. It's I yield to no one. You know, it took two people to replace me last week. I'm just throwing that out there. (laughs) You said that pre-show and it's still not true. Yes, no, it is. Exactly. Alex, how many extra people were on the show last week? Yeah, actually it was more like, uh, I guess it was more like three people because Donnie counts as two. Okay, so see, three people to replace me and it was said so by Alex and if Alex says it then it has to be true alright so uh, it's E3 week guys yeah and I E3. won again thank you we didn't do predictions this year it doesn't matter I won anyway I will bask uh, in everybody's glory thank you alright so we have a shit ton of news to go through well I'm glad I brought my waiters okay so, here's the way this is going to work. All we're right. going to do our updated trophy counts. Okay. We're, we're going to entirely skip what we're playing. Because what we're going to do is we're going to go through every conference. Man, I've been we're going to go through lot, Microsoft. Too. We're going to go through Bethesda. We're going to go through Ubisoft. We're going to go through Square. We're going to skip the kind of funny game showcase only because that's only indies. And not that we don't love our indies, but there's just way too many games to talk about in the indies because there were 60 games announced there. We're also going to talk Nintendo. Uh, but we're only gonna now when we go through these conferences, I'm gonna mention games obviously that are gonna be console exclusive, only because of the fact of how it impacts Sony. But let's try to focus just on the Sony news, so to speak. Uh, also, with that being said, if there's something else you want to talk about, just stop me. We'll talk about it for a second. If not, we're just gonna move on because this is gonna be a jam packed show and be a little behind the scenes. We're recording on Tuesdays. Uh, the show's gonna try, uh, hopefully be out tomorrow morning. Nope. Uh, not, I, I gotta be working 5 a.m., so after this, I ain't touching it. Until another day. Okay, well, maybe Tricky will edit it and get it out for tomorrow morning. Anyway. Alright, so, first thing we're gonna do, update your trophy count. I am level 40, total trophies of 10,003, with 120 platinums. I had to get three trophies, but... Uh, yield in my defense, those three trophies were in Rock Band. Bravo! So, and I'm still uh, the better guitarist and bassist than you. You are not. I am so. Uh, I compare the stats. You're nowhere close to me, Alex. What are your trophies? Liar! Read them for me. I told you I didn't have the agenda. Alex is a level 31 with a trophy count of six thousand eight hundred and sixty-five. That's a real sexy number right there. It is. It's nice. And 102 Platinums in 101 games. 65 is a sexy number? Oh, it's not artificial like your 10,000. Yeah. Hey. Well, I... I <laughs> hey, uh, funny story. I actually have more than 10,003 trophies. If it I isn't actually... synced, it isn't there. Fair enough, and that's the way we're going to do this. <laughs> but... It, it broke my heart when I figured it out because my 10,000 trophy was not my 120th platinum. Because I have more. So when I, whenever eventually I do sync up the Vita, it's going to be off. So maybe I'll just never sync up the Vita. Or maybe I'll just delete that and get the platinums again. Because it only took me five minutes each. Uh, yield your trophies. I am a level 28. With a trophy count of 5793 and 90 platinums in 90 games. Steve is level 15, total trophies of 2,158 with 11 platinums. And Sid is level 38, total trophies of 8,877 with 
with 164 Platinums. All right, so before we get going, uh, I saw this question on uh, Facebook. And somebody said, so evidently gamers are not allowed into E3 until 2 o'clock. Which posed the question, is like, why is everybody being held? Why are paying people being told they can't enter the conference until 2 while media and vendors can go in as early as 10? So, my question to you guys, do you think it's fair that they hold back to paying customers for four hours? Well, when did when did they officially open? E3 started technically yesterday or today. Well, I know, but I mean, on their tickets, when does it say the doors open? <laughs> Two o'clock. Then they're they're not being held out. But they're but the floor is open to everybody else until at ten o'clock. So they gave the media a four hour quiet time before the masses came in. I see nothing wrong with that. Now, Alex, as a person that's gone to E three as media, what do you think? I mean, it definitely helps. I mean, I think that if they advertise that hey, you can't come in until until this time, then you have nothing to complain about if you go ahead and buy the tickets. But as media, like my first trip to PAX was hellacious. I mean, it was, it was very overwhelming as any like first experience of a conference can be. You kind of don't know where to go, and everywhere you turn, there's like lines for video games. So, was this only the first day or every day? This is every day. Oh, every day. I mean, people need to do their jobs. So, if the journalists and the the press need to get in there and see games before the everybody else, before the public, I'm fine with that uh, because doing your job while other people are trying to play is really inconvenient, and it can actually prevent you from doing your job or slow you down. You know, when I went, I had like it was more of a laid back atmosphere. We weren't, we didn't have a schedule of what we had to cover. I mean, we made appointments and everything, but we weren't covering like every single game. We didn't have appointments to every big publisher, every platform holder. We kind of just went to the games we wanted to, talked to people we wanted to. But if you have to go to every developer and cover like fifty plus games or hundreds of games, you need time to be able to get from place to place. So I, I mean, I don't have the uh, problem with them just kind of keeping it to the media for a little while. And I'm sure the show floor is open late. So it's not like if people go in at 2 p.m., they are you know they have like an hour to go through the show floor and see everything they want. Actually, I'm looking up right now E3 hours. Uh, show hours. Do, 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 do. All right. So, uh, okay. Industry badges. On Tuesday, it's 11 a.m. Not 10, uh, sorry. Till 7 p.m. Wednesday is 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. And Thursday is 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. For people paying customers, uh, Tuesday is 2 p.m. to 7 p.m. Wednesday is 12 p.m. to 7 p.m. And Thursday is 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Same as industry. Yeah. See, they, they, you knew ahead of time going in what you were getting into. So I don't... I, I, I can see people having a gripe, but at the same time, it's not like you walked in at 11 o'clock because that's what you were buying into, and they're like, oh, well, you know what? No, we're going to hold you out till 2. You, Your ticket says 2 o'clock. Okay. I mean, I, I put on there that I think, because, uh, you know, E3 has always been for the industry. It's never really been a... No, open the, no, what thing. Was, yeah, what was for the fans was the conferences. Right. So, I mean, me personally, I like I you've heard over the years people complain about how crowded it gets that the industry people actually can't get to where they need to go to cover the event. So, I'm still under the impression that normal average non-media people should not be at E3. I'm sorry. It's the way I feel. If I'm if I'm there to cover the event, I need to cover the event. That's one of my biggest gripes with PAX is PAX only lets a media go in for one hour early. On Well, it was Friday for PAX East. Now it's Thursday. Uh, but we only get an extra hour, and there's no way we're going to cover the floor in an hour. And then the floor is crowded with people, and you can't get to appointments. I've been late to numerous appointments. Yield, you were at PAX. Mm-hmm. 
How packed is that floor? It's packed. It's shoulder. It's shoulder to shoulder. You find a lane, and you. It's like the interstate. If a line's moving, you jump in it and you go. Yeah, and you, you remember I, I, I did I give you appointments that that year or no? I just let you run free. No, no, no. I had a couple appointments. Yeah, I how about, hard I was it to get to your appointments? You, I about kick you out of a computer game because you were so bad. Oh yeah, remember that? That game's now canceled, by the way. It is. Oh, that looked like so much fun. <laughs> yeah, it got canceled. Oh. Uh, hold on, hold on. I gotta kiss my sweet mama D. Good night. Good night, baby. I'll see you in the morning. We're gonna leave that in the show, showing that I'm a loving father. All right, so it's all for show. <laughs> it's all for show. <laughs> all right, so as I said, we're gonna skip what we're playing. Uh, the first topic we have, which is not the conference, is uh, The Last of Us Uncharted 2, Uncharted 3, PS multiplayer servers are going offline this year. This is also including The Last of Us and The Last of, Last of Us Left Behind for uh, PlayStation 3. They're all going, all the online servers are going offline this September. Well, you know, if we were going to get that Last of Us Platinum, we really need to work on that. Yes. But, I, I mean, obviously... There's a time that the servers are eventually going to be shut off. Yes. But do you think this is too soon for some of these games? Because if you look, The Last of Us was released in 2013. Left Behind was released in 2014. Now, granted, that is four and five years ago. But is that a little too early to be shutting off servers? Well, all of these games were released primarily for the PlayStation 3. And we're sitting here talking about the PlayStation 5. So I think that they the servers have been up long enough. Okay. Simple and to the point. Yeah, I I can have I can make arguments both ways. I mean, yeah, how many years uh, has Uncharted Four been out? It's been out for at least what three years now. Yeah, but I, there's still people that obviously haven't bought it yet. Okay, but every like they're not going to keep servers open forever. No one buys well, a game I, thinking that the servers are always going to be open. I mean, unless it's like fucking Minecraft or something. No, no, I get that. And like I said, like I started off by saying, not, servers are not always going to be up. But I just think you know, four or five years is maybe just a little too early. But granted, like you said, they, these they're talking PS3, the PS3 servers. They're not saying PS4 servers. So yeah, I mean, I guess looking at. It, I don't have a problem because if they're shutting off the PS3 servers, but the four servers are still live, then I'm fine with it. But like Gil says, we got to go in and get those. We got to. We, we got to go. <laughs> we got to go play 180 games and not die once. Yes. Yes. Well, no, no. It, it, you well, can die. Not die. Not fail your objective. <laughs> Correct. Correct. 180 games. All right, so let's get into the conferences now. More like 280. Whoa, wait, 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 before you start. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Okay. I would like to state for the whoredom, I did not watch any of the conferences. Okay, continue. Alex, did you watch any of the conferences? No. Ha! Awesome! Thank you for coming prepared, guys. Hey, I told you I came prepared. I watched the trailers on Twitter. Okay, so some of these things you're not going to have any knowledge of whatsoever. So Absolutely let, let, absolutely not, but Tricky will go through it like he always does. I will be prepared. Okay, so what we're going to do... And Yield will give you his utmost <laughs> opinions like he always does. So what we'll do is instead of if I talk about a game that you want to talk about, we'll do this. If I mention a game that sounds interesting, ask me about it and I'll tell you about it. Sounds good. All right, so the first conference we're going to go to. All right, so what what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the IGN article that covers the conference. Then I'm going to look over my notes to see if there's anything IGN didn't cover that should have been mentioned. Copy. All right, so uh, according to the IGN article, the first thing is Project Scarlet, which is their new console. Uh, according to the conference, it's four times... Uh, faster and stronger than the Xbox One X. It's it can handle 120 frames per second, 8K na natively, and it's going to use a, a solid state hard drive to run its virtual RAM. Okay, now it's, correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't that what Sony's doing too? We don't know because we don't have their specs yet. 
Okay, but we well, we just know the solid state drive. Right. And 8K. Um, apparently, Microsoft has teamed up with AMD, and they're doing a custom processor for this thing. Something that you're not going to be able to get in computers, but can run faster than computers. Okay. Okay. It's set to launch in holiday 2020, and will launch with Halo Infinite. They did not define whether or not it's going to come pre-packaged with it, or they're just coming out at the same time. There will Ooh, likely be bundles to entice it, people. There's always it, it, a bundle for every every platform holder during the holidays. I, I I would agree with you, but I what I'm thinking is that what they meant was it was going to be released at the same time, but they didn't define that. Well, you know, to, to be smart, in my humble opinion, they should bundle it together. Or to be honest, what they if they were even smarter, they'll uh, if there's another game coming out that they can sell to people, bundle that with the Xbox so that they can say, "Hey, you get this game, and you can also buy Halo Infinite." Because let's okay. be honest, Halo Infinite's probably going to get a lot of buys. It's a game that'll sell and don't need to be packaged. But if you can offer the Xbox with uh, another game, even if it's not like a particularly like AAA enticing game, you still might get people to bite because it's like, "Oh, free game." He's got a point. So they might actually be smarter not to bundle Halo with it until maybe the following holiday. I I, I have to agree with what the man says. All right, so that's the notes that I have, and that's basically what the article is saying. The next thing, according to the article, is Cyberpunk 2077 gets a release date and and is also adding in Keanu Reeves. Oh, what did they say? You're breathtaking. Say what? You you watch the conference, right? Yes. Okay, and you don't get that reference. I do, or just don't know why you would point that out. <laughs> because it's never mind. Oh my gosh! Uh, you know, after uh, watching that trailer, I uh, I will say that I can see what Yield likes about that game. It's one of those games that just kind of draws you in immediately, just because it looks so like cool. beautiful. Like it looks really good. It does, doesn't it? I, I was interested that 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 this trailer had absolutely nothing to do with the other trailer, and I kind of like that. So I'm like, because now you don't know where everything connects and everything. I, and I, I'm, and I was surprised for a release date too. So, and the release date is April sixteenth of next year. Awesome. All right, moving on. Gears 5 gets a release date and a collector's edition. Moving on. Uh, Gears 5, a <laughs> uh, couple things is they're going to have, if you get the ultimate edition, you get to play four days earlier than its release date, which is September 10th of this year. Is that digital only or is that also physical? That's physical. Oh, okay. Uh, they're going to have a tech test on July 17th. And they're going to have a horde t- test in August 19th. And one of the features that's coming to it is in a mode called Escape, in which you play as a three man team to uh, escape, obviously. obviously. Uh, if, if you buy the game in the first week, you are going to get Terminator Dark Fate. Yes, that is the Terminator as a free bonus. I got a question Does any of this grant sure. me access to Channel Raiden? And while I'm electrified, stab people with a knife. No. Okay. Uh, I will also point out from the trailer that I noticed, and I'm sorry, I've never played... I've played Gears, but I've never bought the game and played them all the way through. So, uh, if this is a big shock, or if like this is a story element that happened before this, uh, please excuse my ignorance. But Marcus Phoenix is not in the trailers. I believe Marcus Phoenix is dead. Okay. Well, that's what I assumed, but someone who's never owned a Gears War game... I would not know that. I that thought, shows you how I, much. I thought I thought his head was in one of the trailers, or when it it was in the uh, the. Um, I just literally just said it. Hold on, let me go back to my notes. So here's he here's the in, best in the in the escape trailer. So yeah, yeah, so like the trailer looked just like straight up gears, like super chaotic and and gory and violent and intense. So it it, it looks a lot like gears. Gears of War, the best way I can explain that series is it's not a game I would buy uh, a console for, like, say, Super Smash Brothers 
or Horizon Zero Dawn. But if I owned an Xbox, I would certainly be buying that game. I agree. All right, next thing, uh, Project X Cloud is coming to Xbox One in October. Phil Spencer spoke about it. It says it will get its first public hands-on demo at E3. According to Spencer, console streaming with Project X Cloud will transform your Xbox One into your own personal server, meaning that your system is going to be used to be able it is what's going to power the stream, so you can do uh, what PlayStation people know as remote play, but on any device. All right, moving on. Okay, um, X- am I supposed to be enth- enthralled by that? That, that, that that's what Microsoft does is it taps into everything. So I'm just it's just like telling. it's like Skynet. I'm just giving you the news, sir. Okay, all right, giving me uh, the news. Move it on. Xbox Game Pass is now on PC. Sarah Bond, head of Xbox Partnerships, took this stage to announce Xbox Game Pass is now available on PC in open beta for nine ninety nine a month. Bond also said a new set of games is heading to Xbox Game Pass today, including Arkham Knight, Metro Exodus, Hollow Knight, and Borderlands The Handsome Collection. Uh, why, why do they doesn't... keep re-releasing or like using these Arkham games as like, hey, come play our new service. Arkham Knight's on there. Like, I mean, I realize the Batman and Arkham games are really good, but they're also, like, a little older these days, so can't you put something newer on there? Or at least advertise something newer? True. Uh, For anybody that doesn't know, because I asked this question when I did the PG spoilers on uh, Sunday night, uh, the way this is going to work is that the Game Pass now on PC is going to have 100 games that are optimized for the PC that is separate from the way Xbox Game Pass. Because if you have Xbox Game Pass, you could play the games that are uh, play anywhere on your PC or wherever you want. Uh, but this Game Pass for PC is also uh, tuned j- just straight for PC games. With that being said... Um, the Master Chief Collection is also going. It's going to cost you $9.99 a month. If you get the Ultimate Game Pass, which is $15.99, it's going to give you the Console Game Pass, the PC Game Pass, and Xbox Gold for $15 a month. So if you're going to get the Game Pass and you're going to get Xbox Gold, you might as well get this because instead of paying $60 a year for Gold and you know $120 a year for Game Pass, now you're paying $15 a month. And uh, if you want to try it out, they have a dollar trial. Moving on. Moving on. <coughs> Elden Ring. <coughs> Excuse me. <It's> too tight. <coughs> Elden Ring from Dark Souls developer and J- George R. R. Martin has been revealed. Uh, the people that made Dark Souls, Bloodborne, and Sekiro have officially announced their new game. Elden Ring, which will feature, quote, a new world from the Dark Souls director and the Game of, Game of Thrones author George R.R. R. Martin. I, I will say that, like, just looking over Microsoft's conference notes, they did a really good job of having, like, eye-catching names and really good-looking games. Because, like, you have the nostalgia of Battletoads, you have George R.R. R. Martin, who's, like, hot, obviously, because of Game of Thrones, and, well, obviously he wrote the, the books, and they become a huge TV, and now he's everywhere, uh, TV, games, and movies, and everything. Um, and they also had, like, Cyberpunk, which is a really good showpiece, because the game itself looks really good. You also have, like, Halo and Gears. So, like, looking over their, their conference, it, like, just, like, getting the items they had to have on there, and, like, the names, and the look that they had to get on there to grab attention, Microsoft did a really good job of getting, like, their best out there, especially after years of people say of, you know, running behind Sony and console sales and being eclipsed by the Switch, and then people saying, you know, pointing out that their first-party studios aren't really that good compared to Sony or Nintendo. And I thought they did a really good job of getting their biggest possible names out there in the forefront for this conference. And, like, this Elden Ring is just another example of that because who doesn't know, you know, who who plays games and doesn't know Dark Souls? And, you know, most of us by now, even if you don't read the books, know who George R. R. Martin is. Yeah. I think this is where... Sony not being at E3 hurt them because there are a lot of games that want to get out now. You know, hey, it's E3. Uh, we're going to get our name out. So you had Cyberpunk 
who, you know, showed on Xbox. You have uh, Borderlands 3 that that came out and showed more on Xbox's conference. So I think this is what hurts was what's going to hurt Sony. We've already seen these games. Yeah, you may show us when you do your little state of play or whatever you do down the road, but you're going to show us basically your more of your exclusives. And I, I think that's what, this is what hurts Sony not being there. Just my opinion. Yeah, it seems like Microsoft really uh, took the ball and ran with it. They used this opportunity uh, to show off, like, like I said, showcase their best. Also, I just want to point out uh, Microsoft and Nintendo getting a little more cozy. Uh, just another great example of that. Banjo Kazooie has finally joined Super Smash Brothers. Uh, Spoiler! Going, they are going to be uh, a DLC character in the game, which is fantastic because it's pretty much like one of the, if not the number one uh, request uh, for that game. So I love love Spoiler. seeing Banjo back in the spotlight. Spoiler! What? I'm I'm just we're it's just, it's it's Microsoft owns rare. Later. It's rare and Microsoft we're, related. We're going over that later. Well, guess what? We went over it now. Sneak <laughs> sneak preview. <laughs> All right. Uh, guess Xbox who's Elite buying that day one? Me. Xbox Elite controller series two has been revealed. A uh, brand new version of the controller was revealed, including Bluetooth connectivity, three custom c- controller profiles, and forty hour battery life. And guess what? Tricky bought one. It, Nope, it has a rechargeable battery for the first time in Xbox history. Oh, okay, moving on. <laughs> um, I'm, just, I'm just looking over my notes to see if there's anything in there that I need to talk about. It's a controller. What else you got to talk about? Because the, 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 the IGN article is given, like, brief snippets of everything. Yeah. Um, nope, I'm good. Okay. Oh, uh, I did have a note on here. Sorry, Kalai, because she just bought two of the Series 1 controllers literally the day before they announced this. Oh, it's... Sorry, Speaking Nukin. of somebody who's in Super Smash Brothers. See, she should have waited. It's E3. You gotta wait. <laughs> uh, now, from some sad news for Alex. Alex, are you, are you ready? I know you know, but... I know, yeah. I, I've already read it. I, I can't be any more ready than I am right now. You're gonna talk about how Double Fine was bought by Microsoft. Yes, Double Fine Productions is joining the Psychonaut, uh, is joining the Xbox Game <laughs> Um But good news for you, Alex, Psychonauts is still coming to the PlayStation 4. So as we've talked about many times in the show, Microsoft's first-party studios need to be shored up quite a bit. They need a lot of help, and they've certainly done that. They have Ninja Theory, which they showed off Ninja Theory's new game at Microsoft's conference. Uh, they also have recently bought Double Fine. Uh, and while I don't think that puts them on par with Sony, I think Sony's still... Uh, head and shoulders above Microsoft. Uh, this is definitely a great pickup for them, and it's something they need to do because they need more first-party studios and someone like Tim Schafer and Double Fine bring a lot to the table, as do Ninja Theory. So uh, I think that this is uh, a definitely a good thing for Xbox and a bad thing for the rest of us because now we can't play their games unless that we own Microsoft console. Well, I said this on spoilers. You kind of had to see this coming. Not that Xbox or Microsoft was going to buy Double Fine, but that somebody was going to buy Double Fine because basic Double Fine basically started the whole kickstart my game movement. To no but to be fair, Double Fine has been independent for so long and put out so many games and really been kind of on the edge of like after Psychonauts and after um oh god, what's the the game that Jack Brutal Black Legend. was the voice of... Um, Brutal, Legend. Brutal Legend. After those games didn't do well financially and they had to go to a download-only format, they really weren't like a sexy like pickup. Yes, they, they were talented, and yes, they could make really fun games, but after financially failing in certain areas, like and for being independent so long, it wasn't necessarily an obvious choice. Like For gamers and people who love to play their games, yes, it was an obvious choice. But from a standpoint of business, it may not actually have been one. Because like, no, like, just... Microsoft's oh. acquisition of Rare, everyone would have thought that would have been amazing. It hasn't necessarily paid off because Rare's best days seem to be in the past. Well, I, all I'm saying is uh, not necessarily at the time when they, when they kick-started their game were they appealing, but I'm saying Double Fine, like you just said, is a very talented studio. So you had to see that somebody somewhere was eventually going to pick them up because 
it'd be a shame that we lost all that talent. That's all I'm saying. No, I mean, I agree. I just don't think that they were the obvious choice from, like, a platform holder standpoint. Everyone, like, gamers love, they like, Psychonauts and um, a lot of Double Fine's games have cult followings. Stacking. But, yes, I love stacking. Costume stacking Quest. Awesome. Costume uh, I, Quest, I, yes. I just think um, that they weren't necessarily, like, a, like a pickup that a lot of people from the business side of things would have said because they have, you know, had a lot of uh, games, or they've had, like, their biggest games just didn't hit. All right. So I wa- uh, I watched the yeah. video of, of Tim Schafer kind of, of explaining that that he will you know that they were joining the Xbox Studios and that you know that they've got employees that have been there 18 19 years. So they've been independent for a good well probably 20 years. Didn't they celebrate their 20th year like last year or something? I'm not sure. Anyway, I remember them having it was a, it was like a, a big year for them. So being independent that long says of how talented they are and and um, and the ability to get funding for their games. But I also think that at the same time, being independent that long, you I don't think that was something that that Tim Schafer was necessarily looking to sell Double Fine because I, for the longest time from what I can remember, he was very animate about staying independent. Yeah, he wanted to stay independent. I I, I have a feeling that maybe that, you know, hey, they've got, like like he said in that video, they've got people who've been there 18, 19 years. He has responsibilities. Yeah, they've all got responsibilities. Maybe he finally realized that, that, you know, I... The funding's not out there, so if I if we want to keep this going, I have to do this. So I mean, I although I'm sad that we're not going to get double fine games from a, from a sense of the fact of if you're one console gamer, we're not going to get double fines games. But at the same time, he's got to do what he's got to do to keep the business going. So I'm not Absolutely. I'm not upset by it. I'm just disappointed. Which is even worse. Well, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, it, it is what it is. I mean... All right. Just, just in the interest of time, we got to move on. Okay, move on. Dragon Ball Project Z is now Dragon Ball Z Karakort. Kakarot. Uh, you know Whatever. If you're going to say it, say it right. You're lucky right, Donnie's Alex, not here. Uh, that's going to come out in early 2020. Awesome. Uh, the Outer Worlds has gotten a release date. It's October 25th You're of this year. You're just going to glaze over that? Man. Over what? The Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. Nobody gives a shit about Dragon Ball Z except for you and Donnie and Frosty. Whatever. <laughs> there was a hesitation there. Almost no response. I mean, honestly, after how I used to get excited for Dragon Ball Z games way back in the day, but after the first like batch of them were awful or just disappointed in general, like I stopped even paying attention to them. Uh, well, I mean, I'm just, I'm hoping for a good one, you know. And I'm not an RPG guy. This is supposed to be an RPG. So, and I like Dragon Ball, so I'm going to keep my eye on it. I'll probably get it. All okay, right. you can the move out- on. <laughs> the Outer Worlds has got the release date of October 25th of this year. Uh, you can pre-order it now. Go check out the trailer for that. I did. Did you understand what the heck was being done? Not a freaking thing. Okay, I'm glad I'm not the only one. Okay, we can move on then. Bleeding Edge has been revealed from the Heavenly Sword and Hellblade developer Ninja Theory. Uh, it is a 4v4, 4v4 multiplayer melee action game. Its technical beta begins on June 27th. Oh, okay. Yeah, that game looks super over the top. I, I don't know. Like I, I, like, I think of Overwatch when I hear that, when I see that game. I don't know how the mechanics work differently. But all the characters are really different, and, like, there's a lot of variety, and they're super over-the-top action. Like, I saw someone get punched into, like, a train with, like, a like a, a face that mashed in, like, that mashed the player who got into it. So it looks, it looks nuts. I And knowing that it comes from Ninja Theory, uh, this looks a lot different than what they've ever done, especially since most of their stuff, or really all their stuff, has been kind of single-player focused and, like, story focused. This kind of runs the, the uh, almost feels like Guerrilla Games with going to Horizon Zero Dawn from Killzone. 
All right. Uh, Ori and the Will of the Wisps has gotten a release date, and that's February 11th of next year. Uh, I will not be playing that game because there was a big ass fucking spider chasing you through the octave level, and that's not me. Uh, oh, the game that has. You know, another game you're not going to be playing. Which is that? Is Jedi Fallen Order. You know what? We'll get to that in a minute. All right, we'll get to that in a minute. Well, not in a uh, minute because you know, Bethesda's up next. Well, no, because it, it, uh, it was. They showed this. Was, they showed this door in the Microsoft trailer conference. Uh, so game that me and uh, Yield are excited for. Lego Star Wars: The Skywalker Saga has been revealed. Whoop, whoop. It's going to incorporate all nine major movies, and I say major only because. I'm not including Solo and Rogue One. I don't know. I saw. I, I read a little something where it wouldn't be surprising if it if like there's like a level or something. For that. well, I, I it it just says all nine films. I'm yeah. That may be DLC or something. I don't know. Well, yeah. I, I well, yeah, when they say all nine films, they're talking the main the main stories. They're not talking Rogue One and Solo. Right. Uh, Tales of Arise has been announced. It's coming in 2020 to Xbox One and PC. Okay. Uh, in a major news, uh, Fantasy Star Online 2 is heading to the West. It will be available in 2020. Oh my god! I have no it's going to be free to play and cross play. I have no idea what that is. I just <laughs> I just wanted to face it's, some excitement. I think it's a old, old school Saturn game. See, I didn't have a Saturn. I, I had cool consoles. Uh, and Battletoads has been revealed, uh, revealing its three-player co-op gameplay, which will feature bosses, platforming puzzles, and intense beat 'em up action. I don't really know, like, if I like the style that they've chosen to go with. I mean, I don't want realistic. I want cartoony. I want stylized. So I'm glad they went that route. I'm just not really like. They almost look too goofy. I mean, I realize they're giant fighting frogs and toads so they're gonna look silly but i almost think it looks too goofy so i'm not really super down mm. with how they've decided to draw the battle toads or to style them uh, but i do love the fact that uh, they are making a new battle toads game because that is a series that deserves some love i think that they also there are looks like some uh, from a different perspective but there are some like speeder bike sections so the one thing they can't do with this game is they got to find that balance they have to make it challenging but they can't drive people away with that old school hard ass difficulty that made the first bunch of Battletoads games, so, uh, uh, frustrating. Alright, uh, so that is the end of the article, but they, they, uh, the article did post up, uh, a trailer, or links to trailers for the rest of the games. Uh, we're gonna go through this as quick as possible. Borderlands 3 was shown. Uh, they also announced that DLC for Borderlands 2 is coming out, uh, but you will need that the handsome collection for the PS4 to play the DLC. Then apparently the Borderlands 2 DLC is going to link you into Borderlands 3. Uh, also I, thought, I thought it was also available for uh, the PS3 Borderlands 2. Not that I'm aware of. Oh, I must have mis- misheard that. If, if that's true, I did not I did not hear that. Okay. Uh, so, you know, again, take all this information, I mean... At, you know, because a lot, of, so much news has come out in the last couple of days that something might have been missed. So, yield, you might be right, or I might be right. I'm not going to. Well, I don't know. Right I, 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 like I said, I can't remember where I heard it. It was in a trailer or something. But I thought, I thought that it was available for the Handsome Jack collection and for Borderlands too. But no, I mean, no, no. They, they outright said you need the Handsome collection to play this DLC. Okay. Uh, that that much I know for a fact they said. Okay. All right. So, uh, what the hell just happened? Okay. Uh, the next thing is Minecraft Dungeons, a four-player co-op uh, top-down game. Uh, go check that out. Uh, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Looked pretty good. Uh, it is starring, uh, if you guys ever watched Shameless or Gotham, um, it is starring uh, Cameron Monaghan. And I'm probably butchering his last name. Uh, the redhead from both of those TV series. And it's also going to have Forrest Whitaker reprising his role from Rogue One. So, can, Yield, go Yield, ahead. you said you weren't too impressed with it. No, I wasn't. I, I mean, it's a Star Wars game and I like Star Wars, so I'll be getting it. But I... See, 
seeing the Wookiee and seeing the facial stuff in that game. It looked a little off. It did. And it looked a little last gen. It looked like Force Unleashed. Maybe a little bit better. But it did not look like something that should be coming out this late on the PlayStation 4, Xbox One life cycle. It looked a little off. And so that was my first take from it. The second take from it is I, I can see they're already trying to have a extremely strong Jedi, like in Force Unleashed, that would probably seem a lot stronger than Vader should be. And in this timeline, it makes it it makes it a little hard to to go with. And I say this because you remember from Force Awakens at the very beginning where where Ren stops the bolt blast midair right. and holds it. In that trailer, that's one of that Jedi's power. Stop the bolt blast, he pulls the guy up, sticks the guy in front of it, and I'm just like Yeah, that's that that got me a little weird too. If, I was like, how if, the hell is he doing that? If you're already doing that, to to me then that lessens what Kylo does in the movies because We've already seen it. That, to me, that was a point in the movie of, holy cow, that's how strong this guy is. No one's ever done that. And now and now we're incorporating it in a game that's years before that's ever done. Yeah, because this game is taking place between uh, Order 66 and A New Hope. Yeah. So I'm just like, uh, so those are my two glaring marks against this game. All right, moving on just in the interest of time. Uh, a Blair Witch game that was announced. Moving on. Yeah, uh, yeah. I. You want to hear my opinion on that? Go listen to the spoilers. Okay. Uh, Forza Horizon 4 announced they are having Legos come into the game. Uh, Lego Speed Champions. It's going to be out uh, tomorrow if you're hearing this on Wednesday. I, so, be out on Thursday. so is that like its own standalone game? It's a DLC. Oh, okay. I saw something about that, and I'm just like, what? The next game is Spiritfarer. Uh, I don't really have any notes on that. Okay, moving on. It's, com- it's coming to Game Pass. It's coming to Game Pass. Uh, Legend of Right. That's, I, ha- I wrote something down on that, I think. Oh, jeez. What, uh, what about the Legend of Left? <laughs> not right, as in our... Oh, no, no okay. Uh, I got release date of 2020 for that. Uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator is coming to PC. Awesome. Looks good, but I don't know why it was on an E3 conference. Uh, Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition in full 4K. Uh, I like that game. It's coming to Game Pass. I'll play it. Uh, Wasteland 3 was announced. No notes on that. Uh, 12 minutes. Game seem interesting. Uh, think Grand Hog Day Murder Mystery. The same 12 minutes keeps repeating and you have to solve the mystery. Unique concept. I like it. At uh, least at least wait. in, you know, in concept. Yeah. Uh, 12 minutes. Uh, not 12 minutes. Away to the Woods. Uh, shell Shaded Deer Adventure. That's the best way I can describe it. Shell Shell Shaded Deer Adventure. Never had that before. <laughs> I'm just uh, honestly, if I've never heard it before and it's that kind of out there, I'm like, all right, I'll give it my time. Uh, State of Decay Two. I know I have notes for this somewhere. Uh, State well, of Decay ho- Two. Ho- hopefully, it's on your notebook. Uh, I got four pages of notes. Did you not keep them in order? I went in order, but this the the art the online article is not in the same order. As my notes are, so I'm having to look to see where are my notes where it was. Epic fail. They should have just went in order of the conference. Uh, I, I know they're having some kind of DLC with it. I remember that. I just don't... Uh, yeah, uh, DLC, and the DLC is going to be in, in with Game Pass. Uh, Dying Light 2, uh, we saw a new trailer for that. Troy Baker is doing the lead voice for it. Uh, Gears Pop, mobile game. Uh Look kind of cool if you're interested in mobile games and like Gears, you want to try out Gears? There you go. Uh, and the last thing for the Microsoft conference was Crossfire X, which I think is interesting. Uh, it is kind of crossfire. Cool for the first time. You got cut up in the crossfire. 
Thank you, Alex. Yeah. I was thinking the exact same thing. Uh, if you have not seen the trailer for it, go check it out. It looks like a badass game. It is coming to the Xbox One first and uh, will feature cross-play and cross-platform uh, stuff. Stuff. I couldn't, th- I couldn't think of the right word at the time. <laughs> All right. So, Microsoft is done. Let's move on to Bethesda. Uh, and the dumpster seconds. and the dumpster fire that it was. Okay. Bethesda. Uh, again, going to go from the article, then I'm going to go off my notes. Uh, Doom Eternal release date has been announced. It's November 22nd. Its new multiplayer battle mode is a 2v1 face-off between two player-controlled demons and one slayer. Uh, looks pretty cool. Uh, not a Doom guy because I'm not a first-person guy. Uh, it's going to get a cool collector's edition, which includes a real helmet, which I saw priced at close to $300. <laughs> yes. Uh, the Sounder developer announces their new game called Death Loop. It's a first person action game around the eternal struggle between two rival assassins stuck in a vicious looping cycle. That actually looked pretty fucking cool. Yeah, it had a very uh, grindhouse feel to it, especially with the aesthetics they used to, like, with the title card and everything. I, I liked the trailer, but I'm still confused at what the heck I'm supposed what? to do. I think this well, I is think just I, supposed to get you excited. Like, you hear that, oh, Arcane Studios, guys who did Dishonored. New game, all right, it's not Dishonored. I'll definitely, you know, let me see this. And I think that, like, just the action and the craziness of the track uh, the trailer is supposed to hook you in for now, and they'll tell us what we're doing later. Uh, Fallout 76 is getting a Battle Royale mode. Oh, boy, cool. I saw some fallout of this on the internet. <laughs> Called Nuclear Winter. It's a 52-player Battle Royale mode. That is free to all Fallout 76 players. Uh, if you're hearing this, uh, you have some time because there is a free trial for Fallout 76. It's free for a week, starting on uh, Monday, June 10th, which is was yesterday as of this recording. And all players are going to be able to play Nuclear Winter. Yield, what was the Fallout? There weren't very many people happy that this is a battle royal. Um... They also announced 76 is gonna is bringing back human NPCs. There is new quests, and the new update called Wastelanders is free. All right, moving on. Moving on. The Evil Within's developer is a new game Ghostwire Tokyo has been announced. It's a paranormal action adventure game set in Tokyo where pl- players are disappearing for unknown reasons. Uh, creative director hinted that the players will be able to in quote. Encounter, quote, conspiracies and the occult, end quote. Uh, I, in my notes, I labeled it as, hold on, I just want to make sure I word this right. Supernatural Dustin. Supernatural what? Dustin. Dustin, like okay. The fa- okay. Like the Thanos so, snap. So, so, okay, so I, I, so I watched this trailer because, <laughs> I watched this trailer because the internet and my Twitter feed was going bonkers. I was getting, everybody like, oh my God, oh my God. So I watched this trailer, and I walked away from this trailer like I did Death Stranding. What the hell is going on? What the hell did I just watch? Everyone else has seen what Kojima's doing with Death Stranding. We're like, hey, let's just be, let's be just as vague. Now, now, I will say I was a little bit more intrigued with this game than I was walking away from Death Stranding, but still, what did I just see? So, that, this game goes in the, we'll just keep an eye on category well, there's there's mind. a lot of that going on because i feel like especially with what we've seen talked about so far it's like all these trailers look really good so we're setting us up, ourselves up for some real disappointment here if a lot of these games don't pull through i will say one of the coolest pieces of imagery from this trailer is when you have like towards the end like the mask the almost like demon mask and it kind of like transitions to, into someone eating ramen and like the the mask going like melting into the liquid that was really fucking awesome. So like, that was, that as, was cool. As far as trailers go, like it's a really good looking trailer. Like just so many, like the cyberpunk, like so many of these trailers, uh, uh, death loop. So are these games actually going to be that good? I mean, at this point, like we're just getting these eye catching trailers without a whole lot of substance to it. All right, moving on. And I'm, I'm, I'm not cutting people off. I'm just trying to keep going. Cause we're almost an hour in already. And we still have three more conferences to go through. Uh, Elder Scrolls Blades is coming to the Switch. Uh, 
if you like Elder Scrolls Blades for the mobile, it's coming to your Switch. Uh, free to play, as always. Uh, and you can be able to transfer your saves from the phone to the Switch. Oh, well, that's a cool feature. Bravo. Uh, commander Keen is coming to mobile. How keen is it? I don't know. But he's a commander, so it's got to be keen. Okay, uh, Rage Two, Rage Two, Rise of the Ghost. Um, it they had a, uh, go watch the trailer because there was a cheat code montage. Uh, you're gonna be able to get a new vehicle called the Armadillo, uh, Rise of the Ghost expansion, and you're gonna be able to get portable mech. Hey, everybody likes a portable mech. Oh, uh, next thing is Wolfenstein, Cyber Pilot VR. Uh, that's coming out in July. Young Blood is another game. It's bigger than ever. Customized for uh, co-op or single player. Uh, Paris is occupied, and that's coming out July twenty sixth. Okay, uh, Orion. They showed their tech. Uh, be able to stream their games. Uh, it's going to use forty percent less bandwidth. Uh, reduce the cost and max settings. Or no matter what uh, device you're using, uh, go check that out if you're interested in that. Uh, Elder Scrolls Online elsewhere. Uh, they have some news about that. Fallout Shelter. Uh, they have over 110 million people playing that now. Uh, and for Doom, if you uh, want to get more involved in Doom, go to SlayersClub.com, and they're going to have more information at QuakeCon. But apparently, they're also doing a convention called DoomCon as well. Anybody want to talk about anything else with Bethesda? No. I'll just say overall that there's a lot of promise to this conference. It's just with Bethesda, it's kind of always a crapshoot with what you get. I agree. Uh, and it's also worth noting they did come out and admit that they royally screwed up with the release of uh, Fallout 76. Well, at least they admitted it. Yeah, they outright said, listen, we screwed that up. All right, uh, the next conference, Ubisoft. Ubi. This is, hey, this is this is the group that I've said for the last, at least definitely last year, probably the last couple of years, I've had the better of the conferences, if not the best one. All right. Uh, according to the article, Watch Dogs Legion has officially been announced. Gameplay and release date. Uh, the third game uh, was announced. It has a NPC. You can take over any NPC in the game, recruit them to your team. It does not matter who they are. Uh, the, the best part is, I don't know if you guys watched the trailer, that old lady kicking some ass, that was the best part of that freaking thing. What, what, I, I, no, I, I don't know, maybe, I, I don't know, I just, I don't get it, Grandma, I mean, it was cool, Grandma walked up and shoot the dude in the chin, but, I, I don't, I don't know, man, the, everybody, no, everybody's the, the grandma, losing their the, mind about the assassin Grandma, and I'm just like, okay, it's cool. No, I, I'm talking about the first Grandma, the one that broke into the police state, uh, station. Developers, um, it's going to take a lot to impress Yield this year. It is. Sorry. <laughs> even even having ass kicking grandmas isn't going to get get you an A. Uh, and the game is coming out March 6, twenty twenty. Uh, Rainbow Six Quarantine is a new Rainbow Six game that was announced. Uh, it's a three player tactical co op game coming early twenty twenty. Uh, Quarantine will pit a squad of players against a, qu- a deadly parasite. Siphon filter. Okay. Uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey creators have announced a new game called Gods and Monsters. Gods and Monsters is an upcoming game from the creators of Assassin's Creed Odyssey. It's coming February 25th, 2020. Uh, the trailer didn't reveal much about the game, but uh, you can go check out articles for more information. Basically, it says uh, when humans have a problem, they turn to the gods. When the gods have a problem, they turn to you. Uh, my e-boner moment of the time, Division 2's uh, year one roadmap. Boy, did I get a lot of information. Uh, if you're interested in playing, as of tomorrow of this recording, if this show comes out on Wednesday, there is three days full, uh, for three days where you can play the game for free for everybody. Episode one of their year one pass is coming out in July. It's a new main mission. It's going to take place in the zoo. Uh, you're going to be chasing down the uh, last remaining outcast leader. And... Yeah. Uh, episode 2 will come out in the fall. You're going to the Pentagon. In Episode 3, while they didn't fully say it, uh, they showed a trailer in which you're going to be in Coney Island back in New York. Hunting a former Division brother. They also announced that their Division movie is going to be released on Netflix. Is it a movie or a TV series? 
movie. Ah, okay. I Star- what, what, when, when I heard about that, I was like, you know, The Division would lend itself to a good movie. Yes. Uh, they already had one on, uh, if you have Amazon Prime, they already have a video for the first one. Oh, or really? a movie for the first one. Yeah, it's like a 30-minute movie. Uh, basically, uh, showing three different people getting activated. Oh, Pretty okay. Cool. Uh, Ghost Recon Breakpoint beta is coming in September. Um, that's going to start in September 5th. Uh, Ubisoft did announce their new subscription service. Uh, it is for PC, pay, uh, PC players. Uh, you're going you're gonna to have access to Ubisoft's library of 100 plus games as well as all DLC and additional content for $15 a month. Uh, this, it will launch in September 3rd and also will be available on Stadia in 2020. Or Stadia, I don't know if you, how you say that properly. Uh, Go- Roller Cha- Google's new platform? Yes. Uh, Roller Champions has been announced. It's a new 3 versus 3 player online multiplayer roller derby game. Uh, think, uh, the best way I can describe it, think Rocket League on in roller derby. Okay. I saw the trailer and I was like, it looks, it looked intriguing, but I'm like, so what am I supposed to do? <laughs> I mean, I mean, I saw them at the end, you know, after the whole little montage of skating around and the kid and the kids in the stands and she's out there doing her thing and she jumps and like dunks it through a horizontal hoop. I'm like, is it like roller skating, but basketball? Basically. So All right. mean, we kind of glossed over the uh, the cost of well, you, you, you play. I told plus. you to stop me. Well, uh, $14.99 <laughs> a month. Do we think that's too much to ask for uh, access to 100 plus games and DLC? Well, it's 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 100 plus games starting off, plus you get access to all the games as they come out too. But is fourteen ninety nine too? Is it fifteen dollars too much just to play Ubisoft games? Because let's be honest, is really anybody like anybody who plays games? Do they just play games from one developer? I mean, if like you have like I mean like think of even if you own a Nintendo console, you're probably playing games from other people. From, all right, all right. from that standpoint, you are correct. But well, we talked about. I'm, I'm sorry, you'll get it. But I will say, the last several years, Ubisoft has put out some quality games that a lot of people are gravitating towards. $15 a month for 100 Versus that's 100, It's $180 a year. So $180 a year. You're starting out with 100 games, Tricky? 100 backlog games. Plus all new games as they come out. Okay, so 100 backlog games plus all the games are coming out. So if if you are a PC gamer, and if there are some games that, that are coming out that you like, Rainbow Six, uh, uh, Ghost Recon, something like that, I would say is probably uh, very well worth your money. If you are, I would probably say most gamers where you... You know, you might dabble in one game, and then you've got your other developers for you grab games from. To commit a hundred and eighty dollars to, that's probably a lot. You have to be a really big Ubisoft fan. Well, let's put it in perspective like this: this in an entire year would cost you more than paying for the online services to Nintendo, Microsoft, and Sony combined. Oh, well, since he put it that way. I mean, yes, they're going to give you access to all these games. Problem is, is that you're not going to play 100-plus games at a time. Yeah, you may play them over time, but are you just going to stop playing games from other developers? I mean, at least with PlayStation Plus, they give you two games a month, and there's actually a legitimate chance that you'll finish both those games in the month. I, he, he makes valid points, Tricky. I can't argue with him. Tricky walked away. I'm back. See, told you. Okay, well, Tricky, my argument against this was is that by the end of the year, you're paying more for Uplay Plus than you are for Sony's services, for Microsoft services, and Nintendo's online services combined. No, because if you, it, well, 
What service are you talking about? Like the, the, the online service? Plus, just, yeah, he's Nintendo's got- online service, and I guess uh, Xbox. Gold. I, I don't know what their service is. Xbox Gold. Live. I guess that's live. Yeah. Xbox Live is sixty dollars a year. Uh, PlayStation Plus is it's sixty dollars a year. That's Twenty and and Nintendo, even at their highest one, is what thirty. I thought it was twenty. Yeah, I thought it was twenty. It might, it might be twenty. So you're looking at right there, hundred and forty bucks. Uh, I mean, if, if you're right, Alex, I can't dispute that. Yeah, that's why I was like, I, I can't argue with them. But if you're a big Ubisoft fan, then it's worth it. I yeah, and I said that because I'm what I'm looking at right now. Okay, just just on my notes. Watch Dogs, Brawlhalla, Ghost Recon, Army of Wolves, Just Dance, Skull. For Honor, Rainbow Six, Division Two, Skull and Bones. Uh, say what? Skull and Bones. Well, okay, but I'm just saying in the games that they announced for E3, Skull, let's just say, Skull and Bones. Arguably, is you're going to play every one of those games. Skull and Bones. Then, is yeah, the pass is coming out next year. Okay, so as in Skull and Bones, if you're going to play every single one of those games. Yeah, I, I'd pay the fifteen dollars a month. But again, this is just for PC. This isn't for consoles. So I mean, it's it's a whole other uh, conversation there. Well, I guess another way to look at it is if you're going to buy three Ubisoft games a year, then potentially this is worth it because that you know. Well, that was our argument last week. As I said, if you're going to buy one Ubisoft game a year, because when we thought it was going to be sixty dollars a year, then it's worth it. It's, Ubisoft is essentially making sure you buy at least one of their games a year, but in, in exchange, they're actually letting let you play all their games. So, I mean, I I, I, I I like some of Ubisoft's games. I like Ubisoft more than I like you know EA or, or uh, Activision. So, like overall, like I have a very positive view of them as a third party developer. But one hundred and eighty dollars a year. I mean, that's a lot to be paying I, I, to one developer. <laughs> To, to you know, to be honest, I would not be surprised within the next week to a month we actually hear that there's actually a yearly price that's discounted. I mean, it would make sense, but you know, I'm assuming they would come out with that at first, unless they're waiting to see whether or not people are down with this price, and then waiting for backlash and right, going to try to to kind of save some face. All right, moving on. Uh, do you guys watch uh, It's Sunny? It's Always Sunny? Uh, I do, yes. Okay, Rob... Mickleheny. Mickleheny. There you go. Uh, has announced a new web series made in partnership with Ubisoft called Mythic Quest Raven's Banquet, in which basically he plays a game designer of the world's most popular MMO, but his ego is even bigger. Sounds like hijinks will ensue. It looks like... Hot garbage. They showed a trailer of the show. It looks like hot garbage. All right. So, at the end of their article, they talked about uh, Rainbow Six Siege op- uh, Operation Phantom Sight, which is a new season in Rainbow Six Siege. Uh, Ghost Recon Breakpoint. Uh, high note: They had uh, I'm gonna butcher his last name, so Alex, I'm gonna need your help. John Berthenol. John Bernthal. There, he came out on the stage with a dog and talked about uh, how the game, uh, the release date is coming out October 4th. Uh, let's see. For Honor, they're, uh, they're bringing in more DLC for that. Brawl Holler is apparently getting Adventure Time DLC. Uh, Elite Squad. Uh, it is a bubble game. Um, over with all the Ubisoft characters. Uh, it looks pretty cool if you like mobile games. And, of course, Just Dance 2020, which is worth noting, is still coming to the original Wii. The Wii getting some love. Uh, so that is the end of the article. I'm looking over my notes real quick to see if there's anything they missed. Army of Wolves. Uh, go check that out. Uh, that's part of Dos Recon. Uh, let's see, For Honor, we talked about R- 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 6, we talked about UA+, Roll Champions, yep, that, that's the end of Ubisoft. Final notes on Ubisoft, anybody? 
No. I mean, they feel a little naked without the Assassin's Creed. Also, <coughs> fuck them for not announcing a new Splinter Cell. Yeah, a lot of people were disappointed about that. All right. Uh, you know what I'm disappointed about? That Sony's not there? Yeah, no siphon filter. <laughs> I No, I said <laughs> Sony, not shitty games. You bite your ton. <laughs> you blasphemous <laughs> bastard. You know, that was just a little too easy yield. I know it was. <laughs> you you kind of set me up for that one. That's all right. Everybody gets, all right, everybody mo- gets a freebie. Two more conferences to go. Uh, two square. more. Final oh. Fantasy Seven is get- no, Final no. Fantasy Seven uh, remake is coming out on March twentieth. They show some gameplay. Finally, a release date. Um, and it's also worth noting it's coming out on two Blu-ray discs. Is it coming out on two discs? I heard it was being episodic. Uh, you know, I've never actually seen that in news. I've only heard rumors of that. Okay, I'm, so <laughs> I'm just asking. I know somebody who's kind of been following this, and they believe it's episodic. I, I, I've heard that numerous times, but I've never actually seen a news story that said that. Okay. I'm just asking. Uh, so, if you're interested in that, that's coming out uh, March 3rd of next year. Uh, Life is Strange got a trailer. Still looking cool. Uh, Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles is coming to the PlayStation 4, Switch, iOS, and Android. Uh, Octopath Traveler is going to Steam. Uh, The Last Remnant Remastered is coming out on the Switch and is out now. Out now! Out now! Uh, Dragon Quest Builders 2 is coming July 12th. It's a four-player co-op. I'm not even reading the article. (laughs) <laughs> going off my notes. Uh, we're doing this backwards. Uh, Circus Superstar is coming out in 2020. Uh, Battalion 1944 uh, is going to Steam. And it's out now on uh, out on Steam. Uh, if you like the Final Fantasy music or any music from by Square Enix, it is now out on all the major music platforms. You can go listen to it for free. Can uh, I listen to it on MySpace? Yes. I'm going to say yes. Uh, Kingdom Hearts 3 uh, is getting DLC called uh, Re of Mind. Uh, it just says it's coming out later. <laughs> coming out later. <laughs> That's all it said. <laughs> uh, Trust me, you're going to get it. After about seven delays. <laughs> uh, Final Fantasy 14 Stormbringers is uh, coming out. That's coming out July 2nd. Uh, they have announced that... Uh, Final Fantasy XIV now has 16 million active users, or excuse me, 16 million users overall, and is now having their most active users ever in the history of the game. Uh, we saw another trailer for Dying Light 2, Romance and Saga 3, uh, Sega Scarlet Grace Ambitions. Gesundheit. <laughs> yes. Uh, Final Fantasy Brave something. I can't even read my own handwriting. Oh, that's bad. Tricky's got that doctor's chicken scratch going on. Oh, it's worse than doctor's. Um, I'm looking to... The- Tricky's over here writing with wet noodles. Is that more apt? Brave, brave, brave. What the frick is it called? It's not even in the article, right? Well, Final okay, Fantasy. It's not good enough to talk about. Shadowbrainers. Final uh, Fantasy our- Brave Exvius. That's what it is. War of the Visions, Final Fantasy Braves, Exvius. It is two in the article. <laughs> See, the thing yeah, is, the reason Tricky can't read that is because he was trying to spell it, and he's like, oh, shit, I don't know. I'm just going to put down some letters. Uh, if I if my camera was on right now, I'd show you exactly what this says, and it kind of looks like it says Final Fantasy Brave Samsus. The best we- prank ever is if the goddess would have taken all of your notes and then rewritten them in Greek. Oh, that, that, I, I would have killed her. That would have been funny. Uh, it's also got, uh, War of the Visions, and that is a smartphone game. Uh, Outriders, uh, is coming out 2020. Uh, let me go back to the article real quick. Still don't know. Outriders that is. is made by, oh, geez, I just saw it. Uh, Gears of War Judgment, people. 
People can fly. Uh, it's a modern, a dark modern shooter. It's coming out in 2020. People can fly. People who made Gears of War, Judgment, and Bulletstorm. Yes. <laughs> uh, the next thing I have is Oniaki. You still haven't gotten to the two important ones unless you're saving them for the end. I, I, I'm i going in my notes right okay. now. Okay, all right. Uh, Final Fantasy VIII is getting a remake. There's there's the first one. And the Avengers trailer. Okay, can, can, I, can, can I go? You want to do your thing first or can I go? Let me do my thing first. Okay, do your thing first because I, I, I want to go. Because I have a feeling me and you are going to say the exact same thing. Probably. All right. So uh, the game is called Marvel Avengers. Not Marvel's Avengers. Marvel Avengers. Uh, it is coming out on May 15th of next year. It's an original story. And we have some big names doing the uh, characters. I did not get the name of Captain America, but uh, Travis Willingham is playing Thor. Troy Baker is playing Hulk. Laura Bailey is playing Black Widow. Noah North is playing Iron Man. It's a four-player online game. All new content, including new characters, will be free. There's no loot box or pay to win. And there's going to be a PlayStation exclusive and an early beta. Yield, the floor is yours. Okay. Well, I didn't know it was a four-player online thing, so that's kind of a, a bad thing. Um, so my first thing is, it 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 were it gave me the same feeling uh, that J- F- Fallen Order did. It doesn't look like a end of a air, you know, the end of a life cycle PlayStation Four or Xbox One game. Is that how, did you feel the same? I felt like the character animations were completely jacked up. Okay, now, now what I'm but hold on. What I saw online, and I'm not agreeing with, is a lot of people are complaining about the character designs because they don't look like the, the the characters from the movies. Okay, I was going to get to that. Okay. What I say to that is the characters from the movie don't look like the characters from the comics. So okay. shut up about that. This is their own version of the way the characters look. You have to just get past the fact that 10 years of who you think Iron Man is is not who Iron Man is. Yield, I'm sorry. Go okay, ahead. so I was going to kind of say that, and, and not to that extent, but I was going to say when you see this trailer, you're like, that's not Thor, that's not Captain America, Black Widow, Iron Man. Those aren't the people that you're used to. My take on it was, you're not going to get those likenesses, and you're not going to get those voices, because you're not going to be able to afford that. <laughs> yeah, so, you, you not, you're not getting Robert Downey Jr. to sit down and do a voiceover for a game. No, you're not. N- n- not with the popularity he had. Now, before Iron Man, yeah, you probably would. But now, no, because he's going to want a certain amount of money. Anyway, it just, for all the hype that was, there's this Marvel Avengers game coming. And I know you were super excited for it that, it, that you know, you didn't hear nothing last year. So you were waiting for this to, to come out. And it, it to me it didn't it didn't hit a lot of notes. The only note that it hit it was, hey, look, we got some really good voice actors behind it. So that can at least make you go, well, you know, the voice acting will be spot on. They will do a very good job of telling the story that way. You know, the best that they can from their character standpoint. But. That first trailer didn't do anything for me to make me go, this is what everybody's been talking about. Well, let's talk about the trailer for a second. Or, I'm, I'm sorry. Alex, do you want to say anything about this before we before I go? I mean, <coughs> like, I don't think that, I mean, after watching the trailer, like, I don't understand how people are complaining about the way the characters look. No, you know, Black Widow doesn't look like Scarlett Johansson, but at the same time, like, the character models, like, they look closer to the movie universe than the comic universe. So I don't understand what people are complaining about. All right. Let, let's talk about the trailer for a second. The The trailer opens up and there's a an Avengers Appreciation Day out in San Francisco. Uh, and then there's some sort of attack on the Golden Gate Bridge. The Avengers obviously go to check it out. They, you know, start Avenging. Uh, best 
you know, verb I can use. Um, and Captain America is apparently on the oh, what the hell? Did Helicarrier. There you go. I could. I, I wanted to say hovercraft. <laughs> no, no, uh, no. This is a lot higher than a hovercraft. Yeah, I know. Uh, and apparently, uh, they, they're using some kind of technology in in the helicarrier, and it winds up exploding, and Captain America dies. Was well, he dead or is he just missing? Well, according to the trailer, he's dead. Oh, I must have missed Five that in the trailer. He just went down with the ship. Well, later in the trailer, they show five years later, it's uh, Tony and Bruce arguing in front of the uh, Captain America memorial statue, saying that, you know, is it their fault or did they get set up or whatnot? Uh, interesting to note, although this wasn't confirmed, it sounded like Ashley Johnson was narrating uh, the trailer. And if you don't know who Ashley Johnson, that's Ellie from The Last of Us. Um. Which I found pretty f- ironic because the entire cast that was announced for the Avengers was in The Last of Us. Really? Laura Bailey, Nolan North, Troy Baker, Travis Willingham, and then it sounded like Ashley Johnson doing the, the narration. Now, granted, they are the biggest names in voice acting. I mean, I wouldn't but, say that. Like, maybe certain sex of, you know, or certain sex of um, voice acting. But I wouldn't say that they're the biggest. I mean, just because you know them and they're in all the games that you play doesn't mean that no, they're the no, biggest names. Well, well, Nolan North and Troy Baker are the the, the biggest ones. Does that include, Bale- like, cartoon movies and whatnot? Or are we just voice talking about video games? Video, video games. Um... But, you know, obviously they go out and do other things. I mean, uh, Troy Baker has done Batman, he's done Joker, he's done uh, numerous characters. Um, well, uh, apparently, like, Ashley Johnson, I'd forgotten this, but she was in the original Avengers movie. Yes, yeah, she was. In 2012. Right. So it would make uh, sense that, you know, she would have a part in this. Uh, but, you know, the trailer, like I said, going back to the trailer, it picks up with Tony and Bruce arguing over is it their fault? And then uh, they showed it uh, after they showed off that trailer. They came out. They talked a little bit. Then they showed off another trailer in which they also revealed that Ant Man was going to be in it, uh, but not. Oh God! What? Paul Rudd. What's the character? Wait, are you are you thinking? Are you saying? What would, what, do you mean to say Scott Lang or, or uh, Hank Pym? Hank Pym is Hank the original. Pym. Hank Pym is yeah, the original. Hank- Hank Pym is in the game, not Scott Lang. I could, I was trying to think of Scott Lang's name. Uh, I was trying to think of the name of Scott Lang. Uh, so, I mean, I'm still excited about it, but I'm also like, what the hell? Because they did, the. I mean, the article says it's a action-adventure game that supports up to four players. But I got nervous when they said it's there's no loot boxes and no pay to win. And loot boxes and pay to win are something that you address if it's a online only. massive, mul- yeah, an online massive multiplayer game. So, what are we talking about? Because they're saying this has a, a original story. So it sounds like it's a you know a normal like I don't want to say linear game, but you know something like you go from point A to point B, and then once you get to B, story's over. But then when they said that. There's no loot boxes and no pay to win. I was like, this sounds like an online only game. So, I don't know. Did, did it? Did this damper your anticipation of the game any? Yeah, it did. So, so, like, so I'm you really went, you went from a I am buying this day one to now you are cautiously optimistic. Well, all right. Let, let's use a scale of one to ten. Okay. 10, ten, be, being, 10 being you're buying it day one. 10 being I was buying the collector's edition and mortgaging my house to buy it. Okay. One being there ain't a chance in hell. One is Metal Gear Survive. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, when they showed the initial trailer, I was at like a eight and a half, nine. When the longer we waited, it went down to a seven, to a six. 
And after seeing this trailer, I'm down to a three. Whoa! You're, go- you're going off, like, it seems like speculation about it being an online-only game. As far as the action and the setup, like, they were going to show one big set piece, and they did that. As far as the look of the game and how it's kind of unfolded in the trailer, I don't really know what else you expected from it. So if, you're, I, if, you're, if your I, hesitation is, is your anticipation it's going to be online-only, I think you only can go on right now what you have to go on, and no one said anything about that. There are rumors that it was, like, people were talking about is an MMO, but as far as we know, it's it's not online only, so until we hear that, you kind of just have to go on what you saw. No, 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 because uh, I don't care about it being online only, because Division 2 is online only. Well, with certain games, like, Yield and I loved I, uh, Warhawk. Warhawk. And, and wasn't it online only? I know it was Absolutely. multiplayer only, but wasn't it all online only? The only, the no, only thing you could do uh, offline was training. So I mean, I'm, like, I'm just all I'm saying is that I don't want this to be a Overwatch games a, a games for service game. I don't want this to be, hey, here's your story, go through your story, and then we're gonna just keep sending villains after you, and you're just gonna keep going, going. I wanted a game where there was a story to it, and it had an end. I don't want an ongoing game. But you love DC Universe Online. Right, but once I hit the platinum, I was done with that. So you could do that with this. Yes, but I'm I'm a huge Avengers nerd. Like I I love everything uh, Avengers wise, and this is going to suck me in. And I I I don't want that. I I want a story, and I don't want this game to go on for years. I want them to make this story, this game, end it, and then come out with a sequel in a couple years. That's why I'm at a three because it's not, it's not what I want. Now, granted, I'm probably still gonna buy this and I'm probably gonna play the shit out of it. And even if it turns into a, a division clone, for lack of better terms, I'm still gonna play it. Well, you'll especially play it if it's a division clone. Uh, you're really playing hardball here, Tricky. Was saying, well, I know I'm not that excited, but I'll probably still buy it and I'll play well, the no, shit I'm, out I'm... of it. Let me tell you, I won't be happy about it, but I'll play the <laughs> shit out of it. Well, it's because I'm a I'm an Avengers nerd. But the, what I'm what I'm disappointed about this is they're not actually coming out and saying what this is. Is it a single they're, player experience? Is it co op? Is it online only? Right, because they didn't say this during the, the 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 trailer. But this article says it's an action adventure game, sold right there, that supports up to four players. Okay, does that mean coach co- couch co op? Online co-op? Is this a game for service game? God, I hope, I hope it would be split screen. That'd be fun. See, so, I, I don't. Some I don't old, want it to be split some screen. Some old school couch. No, no, I mean, the option is there to have your buddy sit down there and play it with you. You can play through it solo, or your buddies can come in and play couch co-op. They, they've done games like that before where you can, you can switch between four main characters... Or you can couch co-op. I think that would be cool. All right, uh, I'm I'm done with the conference. I said my piece. You guys uh, have anything else to say about uh, Square Enix's Square Enix conference? No. Uh, the only thing that I will say is with the Final Fantasy VIII remastered being announced, I hope they don't make them wait as long as they did for seven. All right, so let's get into the Nintendo conference. Uh, again, going back to the article first, not my notes. Uh, in a what the fuck moment, Zelda Breath of the Wild sequel is in development. Yeah! I mean, let's be honest, a Zelda sequel starts as soon as the the other one is released or goes gold. Well, no, Tricky and I were talking before you got here, Alex. There hasn't, and correct me if I'm wrong, there hasn't really been a... Zelda sequel since Zelda 2. Because all all the other Zeldas have been their own story somewhere in the timeline, rather f- either forwards or backwards. Yeah, but, but 2 really wasn't a sequel to the first one either. Wasn't it? I, I didn't play much of it because like, it kept kicking my butt, and I got confused. They, they, uh, you, I, I watched a, a guy do a speed run of it. He beat the game in two hours. I hate and, him. And, like... Yeah, I, I was I, I was cursing the guy out the entire time. I was like, 
How how could you be this good? Because he never picked up the candle. He went through every dungeon in the dark. Hmm. Uh, yeah. So, no details were revealed. Just saw the trailer. Uh, Animal Crossing New Horizons is delayed until 2020. We saw a trailer for that. Uh, in the spoiler news earlier that Alex revealed, Super Smash Brothers is getting uh, Ultimate DLC characters from Dragon Quest and Banjo and Kazooie. It's about damn time. They should have been there a long time ago. Did, did you watch the trailer? Uh, I did, yes. Where Duck Hunt as like a troll. Yeah, they, like they did. They trolled everybody. It's exactly what they did with uh, the King K. Rule reveal because King DDD showed up. It was Donkey Kong and Diddy Kong in their house. And then King DDD shows up and it's like, oh, that's it. And all of a sudden from behind, King K. Rule just comes and smacks the shit out of him. Uh, so that was the King K. Rule reveal. So this was like, King K. Rule was actually in this, hanging out with K uh, King or uh, Donkey Kong and Diddy Kong. And you look out the window, it's like, oh, it's fucking Duck Hunt. But, uh, I mean, clearly they're revealing a new character, so they're not going to just, I mean, these are all, like, well, Duck Hunt's not, but they're all rare characters, so you had to kind of know that Banjo-Kazoo was coming, especially since the Golden Jiggy went through the room, like, bounced on the floor of Donkey Kong's house. It wasn't like they were just going to, you know, leave you that crumb and then not pay it off. All right. Uh, Legend of Zelda Week Link's Awakening remake uh, has been announced and has a release date of September 20th this year. It was also announced that the game will feature a neat dungeon builder tool that will allow you to create your own areas. Eh. I I'm picking it up. Eh. I've, never I've never actually played Link's Awakening. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm going eh to build your own dungeons. Yeah, oh. unless it's a character or a car, I don't want to deal. I don't want to make my own. Uh, Dragon Quest XI uh, S: Echoes of an Elusive Age Definitive Edition. That's a hell of a name. Wow, that's a mouthful. Uh, yeah, that's what say. she said. Um, and that will come to uh, the Switch on September twenty seventh. Uh, Luigi's Mansion Three has a release date. That oh. looked fun. Uh oh, but yeah, Luigi's Mansion always looks fun. What's that release date, baby? Give it to me. Uh, well, it doesn't say in the article. Uh, was there a release date given? Um, hold on. It's got to be a holiday. It it just says 2019. Oh, you son of a bitch. Uh, they said that it uh, it also features a return of the Scarescaper mode from Luigi's Mansion's Dark Moon. And it has a full features, fully co-op and multiplayer modes. Well, it's uh, it's gonna be a holiday game. They need yeah. something for the holiday. I and Super holiday. Mario, like Super Mario Maker, came out. Like they had Smash Brothers last year for the holiday. Super Mario Maker is already coming out. Um, they don't have Zelda. They obviously don't have Mario. So I mean, they've gotta, they've gotta have something. I think that's gonna be Luigi's Mansion for the holiday. Yeah, uh, I agree. With that. I did. I did like the Alex. Did you see the trailer? I did not. No. So, so they've got besides just your I forget what it's called, but besides your 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 vacuum cleaner, so to speak, Poltergust. You, Poltergust. So instead of just that, you can now basically do like moves with it. You can you can capture them, or you can go to capture them and then like slam them back and forth. And slam, and slam them into other and ghosts. Slam them into other ghosts. You've got a projectile, like a plunger, that you can use to, you know, grab it, pull and open doors, pull open doors, and break chests and other stuff like that. So I'm like, well, that's cool. I like I, 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 that addition seemed to fit well in that game. Is, is I guess is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, Luigi's Mansion did not get enough love. And I feel like no, only now... No, I love that game. Well, yeah, but, like, there's a lot of games that, you know, you and I probably like, like Psychonauts, that, uh, you know, except for the Meat Circus. Yield hates the Meat Circus. I, I hate the I, Meat... Oh, F I the get Meat it. Circus. I get it, but, like, it's one of those games that when it first came out, it's people were kind of like, oh, Luigi's Mansion. It's, it's, it's more kiddie. Like, everyone was more focused on Super Smash Brothers because that came out in December following the, uh, the GameCube's release. But, I mean, I feel like now, finally, Luigi's Mansion is finally just getting the respect that it deserves. That was such a fun game. 
All right. Uh, the next thing is surprising news. The Witcher 3 Complete Edition is coming to the Switch. Man, this is just like Skyrim. It's everywhere. Uh, a lot of people didn't think the Switch could handle The Witcher 3, so... Uh, and that is coming out this year. Right now. Well, not right now. No. But what is coming out right now is the Collection of Mana and the Trials of Man- Mana uh, have both been announced, and they're both out today. Right now? Right now. Oh, my gosh. Collection of Mana, which was released in Japan in 2017 and comprises of the original versions of Final Fantasy Adventure, Secret of Mana, and Sadiqin Densetushu. Kazutite. Three. Uh, the last one, which I'm not going to repeat, uh, has never seen a Western release date. Uh, I'll show you a Western release date. Uh, so there you go. That's out today. Out today. Right now. Right what are you now. waiting for? Go get it. Uh, no More Heroes 3 was announced. You're going to get a uh, full game next year. Travis, touchdown! Panzer Dragon, Dr- Panzer Dragoon is has been announced and it's going to come out in uh, later this year. Uh, Pokemon Sword and Shield will feature Pokeball Plus features. It, you're not going to be able to use the Pokeball as a controller, <laughs> but you can still take... Your Pokemon on the road with you. So the two new legendaries that they showed off, no, I don't know if they showed them off at E3, but the two wolves, the one with the sword in his mouth and the one with the, the shield for the mane, they look cool, but my first thought when seeing them was, that looks like somebody cut Amas Tarasu from uh, Okami in half, or at least created two wolves based on that one awesome sun goddess. Which means hopefully Amas Tarasu in Super Smash Bros. confirmed. Uh, okay. Cadence of Hyrule, the Crypt of the Necrodancer, has, uh, coming out. It's coming out this week. Um, if you want to know what this is, it kind of looks like a, a combination of Link characters with Patapon. You know, Tricky, can I ask you a question real quick? Sure. You ain't, why aren't we best friends in a Pokemon Go? We are. No, we're not. You haven't sent me enough gifts or opened my gifts enough. Well, to be honest, I haven't played Pokemon Go in about three months. I know. Okay, I'll, I'll start playing more for you, okay? Yeah. Jared also, Jared of Trophy Horse Facebook page fame. Jared's dead to me. He stopped playing. He stopped opening my gifts. Damn it. Well, he'll hear this because uh, he commented last week about how he heard me breathing through the microphone. Which, I got to tell you, I when I edit the show, I don't hear the breathing. Oh, I do. I, I So I can't take it out because I don't hear it. And it's not even spiking on my end. So I don't know why it does that. I, I'm going to research and find that turn, out. Turn up I, your audio or turn down the sensitivity on your mic. Turn it but up. I, I can show you my screen right now and I'll show you it. There's not even a spike in there. Yeah, but you don't have don't... to spike. You can still hear the sound, even if there's not like a bump or something. I promise you. I I believe you because obviously you know somebody else told you or told me. But I'm telling you, when I edit it, I don't hear it and I don't see it, so I can't take it out. Are you listening? Right. Are you listening to like every second of the shows? Yes. Well then, I. I... I'll play back my audio. When we get done here, I'll play it back, and I'll, you can hear exactly what I hear. Uh, all right, so that is the end of the article, but they do have some uh, links to the other things. Uh, Astral Train, you go check that out. Uh, Ultimate Alliance 3, which is coming out July 19th. Uh, Empire Sin, which I don't have in my notes at all. I don't know why. Why don't I have anything on that? It's I not, don't know. It's not important. Uh, Fire Emblem Three Houses. Just three? Three houses. Three houses. Uh, Contra Road Course. Apparently, that's out today. Contra what? Oh, excuse me. Hold on. Contra Road Core is coming out September 24th. 
but all the previous games are out right now in a big collection. Yes, the Contra Anniversary Collection came out today as of recording. Yes. Yes. Uh, we already talked about The Witcher 3. Resident Evil 5 and 6 are coming. Or are out. I don't know. I didn't put down a release date for that one. Been out for many years. Many. For, I, I mean for Switch. Uh, fall 2019 I got. Uh, the Man of Trilogy collection we talked about. Dark Crystal Age of Resistance Tactics. Don't have that in my notes anywhere. Uh, and that's it. That's it. That's that's the conference. That's, that's the conferences. E three is officially done. Yes. So, uh, we are an hour and forty minutes into the show, gentlemen. So let it be done. Well, we have just one more thing to take care. Of. One more thing. Our topic of the week. Topic. Of we the talked week. about this last week. No, it's been changed. What did we talk about last week? The topic of the week that you had on the agenda. Oh, no, that got erased. That got erased. How about we just make the rest of this show the topic of the week? Well, the, the basic... It, this is quick. It's real favorite quick. News coming out of, favorite news coming out of E3. What was the best things you liked, Alex, coming out? Honestly, like, I have wanted Banjo... I know, like, I, I, I kind of went on and on about the show, uh, but I cannot say how excited I am about, you know, Banjo-Kazooie coming out. Uh, for Super Smash Brothers, it's something I've wanted for years and years now. If we could get the Battle Toads in there, I probably my head would explode. But like that was like because I, I I figured it was a good move and enough people wanted it, but I also didn't think like with all the rumors of Steve from fucking Minecraft being in there, I never thought that they would actually do it. It's kind of one of those things they were on the precipice of being, hey, they could do this, or hey, they could really fuck this up and not do it. But they did it, and I'm happy because I really enjoyed the Banjo games, and I like Banjo Kazooie as characters too, and I think they fit right in with Smash Brothers. So, uh, but I mean, everything else, it was kind of like, I expected it or, um, you know, it was something that looked really good, but also at the same time, it's like, this is just kind of made to look good in a trailer. Who knows how it's going to look in the future. So without Sony being in there, I would have to say that Banjo-Kazooie being in Smash Brothers is my favorite part. Although I would have to give like my my saddest part, and you know I'm happy for Tim Schafer and Double Fine, but it would have to be Double Fine being bought by Microsoft because that means now I can't play their games unless I buy an Xbox, which I have never done and probably will never do. Well, there's also a chance it's going to come to Switch now that they have the partnership. Very true, you sly dog. Uh, yield your favorite. E3 announcements. Uh, so seeing a Luigi Mansion 3 trailer is makes me all kind of warm and fuzzy on the inside, and it helps to encourage me to go buy a Switch. Um, but you just found out today that I own two of them. <laughs> yes, which you own two of them, and I would think that probably. My my favorite announcement was the Lego Star Wars Skywalker Saga coming out. Uh, Lego Star Wars was the reason I got into Lego games and the reason I kind of stayed with uh, 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 what, Traveler's Tale. So, I'm, I'm all for... I, even though I am kind of Legoed out, it's Star Wars, and I am more than willing to go back into this. The interesting thing it will be will be will they add voice actors for the f- original trilogy and the prequel, or will they stay with their trademark, you know, goofy cutscenes without the voiceover? But either okay. way, either way, the trailer was cool for it. I'm I'm, I'm sold on it. Uh, my favorite news is just basically um, Sony just trolling the hell out of everybody after everybody made their announcements. Uh, I I thought it was hysterical that it they they announced that uh, that one game from Microsoft that was coming to 
uh, the West for the first time. It was announced and everybody was all hype. And then Sony just steadily uh, so, and softly just announced the release for Final Fantasy VII Remake just like five minutes later. It's like, boom, there goes your wind out of your sail. Uh, no, but I'm, I'm joking, obviously. Uh, a lot of the news, news was surprising. Like, I didn't expect them to announce a Breath of the Wild sequel so soon. I mean, we kind of expected that to come. Uh, just, I expected more. I really want, I really like the Cyberpunk trailer, but I, uh, I don't know. Something about that game just doesn't have me too interested. Um, I'm, I definitely want to try Crossfire X. I mean, I, I'm telling you, go check out the trailer for that game. That game looks ridiculous. Uh, well, for, as for Cyberpunk, I'm not like sold day one on it yet, but I'm, I'm excited to see what more they're going to do with it. I want, I want to see... The, 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 you got your first trailer, and then we got some gameplay. Now this is a totally different trailer. I, I want, you know, would like to see some more gameplay. So good, um, sorry, continue. No, it's just go check out Crossfire X. Like I said, uh, that game looks ridiculous, and apparently it's like the biggest game in the world in the uh, Eastern Hemisphere. And nobody heard about it. I mean, I've heard, I've heard of it, just didn't know about it. But apparently, now it's coming across, uh, you know, to the to the West. Um, I'm hyped to see that. I'm a little upset it's going to Xbox first, and then eventually, you probably have to wait another year to play it after it comes. But overall, I was I was very impressed with all the conferences. Uh, Microsoft did good, uh, and I, you know, you know how tough it is for me to give them credit. But the one thing that I will say uh, negatively out of E3 was I was very surprised that Microsoft didn't really put the hammer down and announce exclusive games. They announced some, but everything was a world premiere and nothing was confirmed whether it was exclusive or it was coming to the PlayStation 4. I mean, obviously we know uh, Ninja Theory's game is staying exclusive. Um, Battletoads. Yeah. That like all we know their first party studios, those stuff is gonna stay exclusive. But even when they announced You didn't get that yeah. surprise like Horizon. Right. It's like they they it's like they played it safe. You had, yeah, but to be fair, got, like give Microsoft gears. some credit this year because in the past they've been known for trying to point out that huge division between their online services and Sony's services. And what they did was they just put out the biggest third party games that were gonna be on their console but also on Sony's so this is them focusing more on their own in-house developed stuff, which I think you have to get them credit for. You do, but I think they played it too safe. But, I, I, like, I, you know, honestly, the- I don't think that buying Double Fine and making a Battletoads game in this day and age, you know, two decades after they were, re- were relevant, like, I don't think that's playing it safe. But, I mean, okay, I'm not... Not to shit on Battletoads, but does anybody really give a shit about Battletoads anymore? A lot of people probably yeah. do, because think about how many people grew up with Battletoads. Alright, you know what? I, I'm going to lose this battle again, because I, I I said the same thing on spoilers. I just, my, my personal opinion, I mean, even Microsoft took a shot at Sony, uh, in my opinion, maybe, you know, I was told I was wrong, but Microsoft said... Uh, this is the the only place you're going to see the most trailers and the most games on any stage this year. Which obviously was a shot at Sony because they were not there. Well, we'll, uh, have, we'll have to wait until Sony does a conference. Well, you, know, I, you know they're going I firmly believe Sony's either going to be at Paris Games Week or there's going to be a PSX or they're going to GDC. Uh, you know, one of these conferences, Tokyo Game Show... Or they just might stealth announce everything. But I firmly believe we're going to get a PlayStation 5 announcement this year. I damn sure think that we're going to see it by the end of the year. Release? Um, no, no, well, no, no, see the console. Okay. I, I don't see the console. I see the console coming out the same time as Xbox next year. I, I believe that, yeah, 20, holiday 2020. And, and, and honestly, I think Sony made a, a good move by <coughs> not going to this E3. Because they were able to sit back, hear all the announcements, and make adjustments as they need. Because I think they got, uh, for lack of better terms, I think they got their shit kicked in 
when Microsoft announced their Xbox One X and they realized, like, oh, shit, like, Microsoft's really putting power into the system. So they went back to the drawing board. They let Microsoft announce what happened, what's going on with the new system, and now Sony can adjust and, you know, make their own announcement and blow it out of the water. All right. So that's it. Uh, I'm going to forego the normal housekeeping this week because the shows are a little long. Uh, you already know all the housekeeping. We'll start doing it again next week. Uh, you know, just go check out the site. Go check out the YouTube. Go check out the Twitch. Go check out the other podcasts. Uh, go check out Patreon, Amazon, all that stuff. Extra Life. You've heard us say it before. We're going to go straight to shout outs. Alex, your shout out, sir. Give a shout out to all the awesome announcements at, well, no, 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 not going to do it, throwing you for a loop. Uh, as always, at first, I want to thank the listeners, the fuel to the Friday's Trophy Whores. Thank you all very much for supporting the show. Without you all, we wouldn't be where we are. We wouldn't be on Spotify, on iHeartRadio. So thank you very much for your continued support and for listening every week, or or most weeks, however you listen. Uh, just thank you for spreading the uh, yield. I, I was about to steal your exact line. I'm not going to do it. But thank you for uh, just spreading Trophy Horrors to all your friends and letting them know about Trophy Horrors. Um, and just word of mouth, it helps us out a ton. As do reviews on any service that you uh, listen to us on. Uh, give a shout out to all the awesome announcements at E3. Even though we didn't have Sony, definitely got some good things. Uh, shout out to Nintendo for bringing Luigi's Mansion 3 and for making Banjo-Kazooie happen in Smash Brothers. Also, shout out to Microsoft for allowing that to happen. So, you know, since they own Rare... Uh, yeah, and uh, lastly, give a shout-out to my loving girlfriend, Ashley, for not killing me for recording for so long. Yield. So I would like to give a shout-out to the announcement of the Siphon Filter reboot and the console <laughs> date for Wreckfest. <laughs> oh, wait, that didn't happen this year. <laughs> Did no, not happen. No, didn't happen. I'm, you know, I actually am bummed that I didn't get a console release date for Wreckfest. I'm, I'm a little I'm a little disappointed. I'm. Yeah. Anyway, so I would like to give a shout-out to you, the pimps and the madams of the whoredom. I would like to give a shout-out to Johnny and Daryl for filling in for me last week because it took three of you, because Donnie counts as two, to fill in for me. Christmas. Even besides what Tricky says. Do the math, folks. I know you can. Do you uh, want you guys to go back and listen to last week's episode? What now? Did either one of you go back and listen to last week's episode? No. No. Okay. I, I, I'm going to... show's out. Uh, well, Daryl, so. because Al, Alex uh, some, had to take off early last week, so he didn't actually do his shout-outs last week. So Daryl did Alex's shout-outs last week. It was priceless. Uh-oh. That sounds scary. You got to uh, go back and listen. A shout-out to Tricky. And Alex for recording on a Tuesday night. A shout out to all of the video game journalism industry. All right, I said it. For your coverage of E3 this year, a shout out to all of the developers who put in their blood, sweat, tears, and very a whole lot of time into this E3. And... That'll do it for me this week. I'm going to shout bed. Out to, shout out to the goddess. Shout out to Sweet Mama D, who's already in bed. Uh, shout out to the listeners. And shout out to everybody at the Cover D3. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Hopefully it's out tomorrow. Uh, but I don't think it will be because I'm starting to get tired myself. If not, blame, uh, if not, blame Tricky. Yeah, if ha- it's not out tomorrow. Hashtag blame bl- Tricky. Well, blame me because I'm. Uh, these guys record late at, due to my request, so... Uh, if the show's out late, I apologize. Uh, but we're going to do our best to get it out as soon as possible. All right. Uh, so if there's nothing else, until next week, happy trophy hunting. Have fun. Later. The theme song is Venus by the band Even off their album Zenith.
permission granted by the band and 12 Stone Records. You can find them on Facebook by going to www.facebook.com slash evenphilippines. <laughs> <laughs>